motion to go out and close meeting. Motion. Second. A motion to second. The clerk, please call the roll. Mr. King? Aye. Mr. Burns? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gable? Aye. Mr. Cree? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six aye. Certification of closed meeting, whereas the Board of Supervisors has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and whereas section 2.23711 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Montgomery County, Virginia hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification resolution applies and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion conveying the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the board. Need a motion? Motion. Have second. a motion? Second. And a second? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Perkins? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Creed? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Chair Ryan? Aye. Six ayes. Our next order of business is our invocation. This is where uh, the board observes a moment of sil a silence to reflect on the business at hand, and after that moment of silence, we'll be led, by, led in a pledge by our county administrator, Mr. Meadows. Let us pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda is delegations, and tonight we have... Uh, Mr. David Clark from the Virginia Department of Transportation. Welcome, David. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'll give you a little bit of an update on some of the general maintenance things. We, uh, actually, we've got <coughs> quite a number of construction projects going on, too. I'll sort of tell you where we are on those. Um, as we came down to the end of the fiscal year, we were trying to get as much patching uh, done as possible, uh, especially in front of our overlay schedules. Uh, we got that done. I think most of the surface treatment schedule is done, and most of the um, asphalt and plant mix overlay is done. We still got up some shoulder stone to put down on a few of the routes, um, but we're working on that. The slurry seal is not yet started, so I'll let you know when that's getting ready to go there. Uh, the contractor's got multiple counties, so I think we start with the southern area, it's working its way to Floyd and then up to here. Um, in the meantime, we've been doing storage, it's our normal. Uh, things, uh, machine, you know, gravel roads, putting down stone, uh, cutting brush in there. Uh, of course, probably the biggest, most visible thing going on right now that we've uh, been working on along with our hired equipment contractor is constructing a temporary parking ride uh, to move the one at <coughs> Farm Branch Elementary over at the lower under Roanoke Street at the corner where the bypass ramp comes off. Probably you've been up <coughs> Roanoke Street towards 460 or one may have seen that. Uh, today they did, I believe they got all of the base course asphalt down. Um, that's a, there's another topping course to make a smooth surface, but they put down the base stuff because you're going to have heavy buses and things like that coming in there. So we do a little bit more to, to, uh, to accommodate that. But uh, we're on track right now to finish that at the end of the month and very shortly thereafter before school starts and then we'll have to go through an information process to let the people that use the old park and ride let them know that we're moving it, closing it over and so forth. Um, other than that, we've got our two major projects uh, in the county going on, both on, on Pepper's Ferry Road, Route 114. The bridge is about done. They've got some little cleanup to do, but um, the 
westbound had been open. We just had a lane closed coming back eastbound, and that's open now. Um, the town project is moving along well. Of course, they still have quite a, a lot of time left on, on that. Uh, several months they're supposed to be done with that. Uh, they've got uh, on the contract till November to finish that. So um, that's going fairly well. Um, they're starting uh, Route 603. I guess that's North Fork Road, I think it's called that, in between uh, Route 11 and, and 81. Um, they're just now mobilizing, starting to clear some stuff. They got a box call for coming in towards the end of the month. Um, but that's that project uh, has got several years to complete, so they're really just getting started on that. Same with uh, Route 773 bridge over uh, the Roanoke River, North Fork of the Roanoke River in Lafayette. That's getting ready to start. They've been doing just some mobilization. That's got a couple of years. That's the old truss bridge over there. Um, we should start either tomorrow or, or, or very short in the next few days uh, a revenue sharing project that the county uh, wanted done on um, Blue Springs Road on the surface street, almost a half a mile of that. Um, we're doing that with, uh, with our higher equipment, some of our state employees as well. Uh, it saves us a little bit of money. Uh, the project on Mount Pleasant, we had a pre-construction on that. That's a, that one went out to bid, so that's not state forces, but uh, uh, they've got until springtime to finish that. I had heard at one time they might be going to try to finish this construction season. I'm not sure if that's true anymore, um, but they should be starting that here fairly soon. Um, if they can't get the paper, you know, obviously the paper will be the last thing to do. If it's too cold, they're going to risk it. They'll just let it sit over the winter and do it when it gets warm in the spring. They have until, I think, May to finish. So, um, we've got a couple culvert replacement projects, bridge replacement projects. I'm knowing they're, they're small bridges, they're just the superstructures, just the, the part of the bridge above the piers, the beams and the decking, um, along with some culverts. The next ones that are going to happen are on Lick Run. There are two sections that we're going to do on Lick Run. It will require a uh, partial closure of the road. We'll, it'll be down to one lane. We'll have like a signal or automatic flagger in there. It'll be, it'll, it'll be one way at one time and controlled by lights. And they've got 30 days to do each of them. Uh, they're going to try to finish that. Um, by the end of the year, also, also the same thing will require repayment. So they got two 60 day closures, which are possible. They're going to try not to do it consecutively, but that's so they have to do it, they have to do it. But uh, those are our major construction projects going on, and I'll take any questions the board might have. <coughs> Mr. Green? Yeah, I've got a, a couple of things. Uh, and, and I will say that I did say the Park and ride, and it was looked like to me it was paved also. So mm -hmm. it, it, it looks really nice. Uh, one of the things that I, that I really need, Craig Mountain Road. Uh, it seems that I don't know. It, you've got paved road down to the foot of the hill, and then it's gravel road and. There's probably 10, 12 houses down there. Somehow or another, Dan Bro is saying that the top part down to where we stop has got 250 cars a day. And the dirt part on down below that has got 350 cars a day. Now, I told him that don't make sense. <laughs> I really, really need a road count. Yeah. Uh, and one on the bottom and one on, as you turn into Craig Mountain Road. Yeah. Because those figures to me just cannot be right. Yeah. I'll look There's up and wrong. see what our official count is. Sometimes we have our own little counters. They're not. You know, they're not official counts. We're not professional traffic counters. We'll be no, but we should be able to get in. You know. 10, yeah. 15, or 20, or somewhere close yeah. to that, um, but somehow that, that figure just, you know, I argued for an hour and I finally give up. 
<laughs> you give it. It's drawing a lot of people when they're not going all the way out. They're just stopping it. Yeah, there's something wrong. They must be stopping back and forwards over there. They must put up one of them bales in the road, and they like to tune of them or something going back and forth. I don't know, but they're just wrong. Uh, and the other thing has to do with Mount Pleasant, and I heard you mention one road is going to be done. Now we've got the straightening of the road or the banks that's on that's a revenue sharing project yes revenue sharing and that's been there for a couple of years now uh when is and that ain't the one you're talking about right? no the, the the paving part you're talking about the yeah, paving the the bridge split rail, yeah yeah the bridge to split rail what what is the hold up on the other one a lot, there's a lot of part we're doing all this our our our, our people and our equipment so we're doing the blue springs road and i think we got the brush mountain road and um, I mean Brush Creek Road, and uh, I don't know where we are on getting the environmental stuff for. So, you know, the big people that are losing is, is is the people out there that paid their taxes. That there's no use in us bringing forth any other monies until we get some of these off the off the books, and right. so. Uh, you know, we're, we're losing out on, on places and times that we could get this done, and I don't know, it's uh, kind of frustrating to some point because, you know, we left, we had the last five years of the best times that you could possibly do and still got a lot of these projects. Uh, there's a number of ways to do it. The county can administrate the project if it like, or we can put it out to bid, but I think that'll cost a lot more. Yeah, well, we need it to be the best way we can we can do it and I don't know what that is but I do know that some of them have been laying there for a while that, that really need to get done but that's, that's all I had you know the, the road I, I done beat myself up over how many people go down that road I went down to set one day and never did any car go by so I left, <laughs> I, left I sat there for two hours I got two things okay <clears throat> just two things uh, on Fairview Church Road, the Low Water Bridge. Mm -hmm. Did you send somebody over out there to check the I'm not sure. I'll, I'll check and see. I know you mentioned last time you weren't sure if those pipes were clogged up or not. Yeah. And the air is going out to Route 8 off that's West Bank. That's approved. Yeah, that's a primary thing. I've sent that down to Salem to approve the. Uh, well, I'll approve it. Go ahead and do it. I'm thinking it's all down manual, our federal manual on traffic parking and things like that. I appreciate it. Really. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No. I've got okay, Mr. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention, David, is I do appreciate uh, last week we had a meeting. Uh, Supervisor Biggs had an issue from a constituent on a forest road up on Brush Mountain, and Daryl Worley came out, and um, Daryl and the, the park ranger met and had a very productive meeting. Thank you for your help with that. Glad to do it. Are you you guys going to move that Porta John from over there out to this site uh, until the temporary park and ride site? Move what? That it's a uh, I guess a Porta John yeah. over at that site. The county the county actually pays for that. Yeah, pays for that one. Uh, but will it be any facilities on the temporary lot for people to use? I think we'll be able to to get that there. Yeah, I think we should be able to do the same setup there that we had or the other one. Yeah, the 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 Porta John is being it's actually being paid for by economic development, and we also we secured that the shelter yeah. shelter from the uh, folks in Roanoke. So anything we can pick up and move, we'll be glad to pick up and move it. Good. That's uh. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Dave. Thank you all. Okay. Next item is public address and I think we have one gentleman signed up Mr. Paul Smeal and he even, he even got back up with him Rudy Maybe we gotta get his three minutes <laughs> no you get five here <laughs> uh, Paul Smeal well, first of all to Chair, Chairman Brown ladies and gentlemen Paul Smeal 1107 Kentwood Drive Blacksburg Virginia been a resident there since 1960, so I guess I've been around a little while. 
Uh, what I wanted to talk about was uh, your Department of Parks and Recreation, and then what I want to talk about is how good they are and how I hope you're all pleased with them. And although you don't hear the comments that I do, and the comments I hear are nothing but praise, every time we do a trip, just about everyone in the van or, or with us thanks our supervisor for the trip and so forth, and they're really pleased with them. And as I look at the total of the parks and recreation, I, I always try to look at it from a program, not an industry and so forth. In my previous presentation, Sue, I've always hinted that maybe we need a bus for seniors, maybe we need a, uh, a splash addition to the frog pond. We know we need more athletic fields and more facilities. However, recently I've been here and, and watching different things and I think the outdoor supervisor is one individual that certainly needs support and help but also at the same time I recognize there's a freeze on positions and so forth but to give you just one example well, a couple of comments one is I understand Chris Lester is down in Palatine or Richmond today or tomorrow with a group a, a team from here uh, competing in the World Series or the Nationals or something and we've had some excellent teams coming out of Montgomery County in recent years. But the one item I wanted to mention, and I'm sure you've seen these figures, but last winter, for example, the basketball teams signed up was 70. 70 basketball teams, and when you think about five players per team, plus two coaches per team, plus the referees and all that, and for one faculty, or one staff member, Chris Lester, for example, trying to keep up with that kind of a thing. And the question was, why did you have such a big growth? Well, one reason is that because of the additions of the schools that Ryder have given the county and our athletic director more opportunities for youth to participate. So we have that. Uh, on the seniors program, which I participate most in, uh, was the ones that responded, and so this goes back maybe five, six years ago, the people from uh, Meadowbrook, well, Charlottesville Allison, and they had, after you purchased Meadowbrook, which was an excellent choice and decision on your part, uh, Parks and Recreation was a call upon to give programs, and I think Mr. Creed really has to be pleased with what Parks and Recreation has done for the Charlottesville and Elston area. They have excellent programs, not only for adults, but adults plus the children, and some of the events, I guess, get 70, 80 people out to them, and so forth. That's a little bit about the senior program and you're all familiar with the frog pond. And I need to do mention that when I look at the budget in the spring, it's already printed and I think that's a little bit too late to come and say, please give them a few pennies more to, to do different things. Also, I recognize that you do give them more, not more than what was designated in the budget, which I think is around 700000 And the income that they generate from fees is usually a third of that, except for this summer. And I think uh, Mr. Meadows and others have already heard that the income for Parks and Rec is going to be down this summer, not only for Montgomery County, but Christiansburg and Blacksburg, because the summer is about four to six weeks short. Yep. Uh, school getting out June 18th, school starting back August 12th. You only have about four to six weeks for programs for camps and so forth. So the income generated by Parks and Rec will be less than what we've had in other years. This will be made up next year because school's up May 29th, I think. So we will have a full summer for programs and so forth. Uh, I guess I could go on with different things, but what I really want to leave with you is, is you do have a good give up. And I can't really say more about it, but, but I do represent probably two to three hundred seniors, and, and I know I represent an awful lot of the youth, and I think it's better to have the youth in our programs than to have them in delinquent or whatever. So, so hopefully you recognize hmm, essentially what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just, yeah, I, we don't normally do this, but he did mention we have a, a group in a 
state tournament. They're up two to nothing. They're under a lightning delay. Um, and if they win tonight, they'll be going to the World Series. Also, I think the 11, 12 years old just won the state out here yesterday. It may have been the Christians, but yeah. Well, they, sure we have quite a few successful ath youth athletic teams. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and Rudy, it's good to see you. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to address the board about any business r related to the county? If not, we'll close the public address session and do we have an addendum, Mr. Meadows? Not this evening, no, sir. No, we don't. And the next item is the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Tuck? Aye. Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Cree? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Burgess? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six eyes. New business. Uh, subject A, resolution com commemorative. I'll be able to say it in a minute. Commemorative. <laughs> uh, resolution of commemoration for Joel Donahue. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. And the uh, only comment I say is that it's, it's uh, well deserved for the efforts he had given to this county in the capacity that he served in. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Gabriel? Aye. Mr. Creed? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Ms. Perkins? Aye. Mr. Tuck? Aye. Chair Brown? Aye. Six ayes. County Attorney's Report? Aye. No reports. County Administrator's Report? Mr. Chair, due to the length of the meeting already this evening, I have no report. <laughs> Thank goodness. I have to write this one down. This is the first time. <laughs> Board members report. Uh, Mr. Creed. Not going to rock that vote, no. Supervisor Perkins. No report. Supervisor Tuck. Well, uh, of course, being the lawyer, I've got to say something. And, uh, but in, in all seriousness, Judge Turk passed away. <coughs> and uh, I, I didn't know Judge Turk that well, but I knew him in two different ways. One is a very young attorney. He appointed me to represent a man who had struck a postal worker in the back with his cane. And the fellow was a World War II vet of both theaters. It's very rare to have someone who was a veteran in both the Pacific and, and the European theaters. And he had, was fussing at this postal person because they kept putting junk mail in his box and they hit her with a cane. And uh, he was suffering and, and, and with two dementia issues and incontinence. And Judge Turk said, don't worry, Mr. Tuck will be happy to pick you up and drive you to court. <laughs> And I learned a lot from that veteran um, going to court. And every time I would ask for a continuance, you know, Judge Turk would fuss at me, but he would grant it because he knew exactly what I was doing, which was dragging the case out until it got to the point where actually the veteran passed away before he ever went to trial. Um, but he, he knew exactly what, well, every time I was asking for a continuance, uh, even though he was fussing at me. Uh, but while I was there, he would get down and shake the hands of the, each defendant when he passed down a sentence and say, I, and he, I truly believe he meant it, he, he wished them the best. And the reason I know that he meant that was another one of my jobs I've had has been a camp attorney to the, used to be Camp 1 over in Pulaski. And Judge Turk would go over there on two times a month and go minister as part of his church to the inmates over at Camp 1 and give up his time and never make it, hey, uh, this is a federal judge coming in and a lot of times I would be coming in at the same time. But he truly gave of himself and he truly cared about his, uh, his fellow man and he also believed in second chances for folks. And so uh, uh, he will be missed and, and so I just wanted to recognize him. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Tuck. Um, Supervisor Gable. Uh, two just very brief things. Um, I was wondering perhaps at uh, an upcoming meeting we could have an update on the paid maternity paternity leave. Um, I think we were all in favor of, of in theory doing it, but Mr. Tuck had asked about costs. So if we could get that, and then maybe we might be able to, to move forward with that sometime soon. Um, hopefully it won't be at the next meeting, however, because I wanted to just let you all know that I'll be traveling and I won't be at the next meeting in, in two weeks. We'll That's all. Thank you. 
we'll get the first we'll get it first meeting in August. Yes. Supervisor King. No report. And it's down to me. Yeah, I, I really uh, agree with the comments that you said about Jets Turk. I, I met him early, early in my law enforcement career back in the in the seventies and I had an opportunity to be, uh, I guess, a, a defendant in a, in, a, in a couple civil suits in his federal court down there. And uh, when you, the first time you go in, I mean, it's when you're on the federal scene, it's big time. I mean, it's huge. Scary. Yeah, but he still made you feel comfortable, and we had a, a good team of attorneys and and. Anytime he rules in, in, in my favor, <laughs> he, in, in both times, I, I thought he was a pretty squared away man. Uh, we often together years ago uh, spoke to some youth at a church. He, he come in from the judge's side and I came in from the law enforcement side as uh, team uh, people in counseling some some youth at, at, a, at a couple churches I, I, I do recall that but uh, he will be missed by a whole lot of people the if you know anything about the federal courts down there the the I was pretty familiar with the security there they all uh, loved him uh, and we losing another good job to judge to retirement uh, the chief judge uh, Samuel Jackson yeah uh, so He's missed in, in uh, all around the New River Valley and, and Roanoke Valley. And so with those comments, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.